Hey everybody, we're back in the shop and I'm here with my buddy Brian Wolf. We're going to be talking to you today about the 7.3 gas push rod engine that Ford is coming out with for the 2020 Super Duty trucks. And uh, we got one on a stand here. One of the things that everybody wants to know is how big is the engine? How does it stack up to other Ford engines? So we thought we'd show you a comparison. Brian, what do we got? Yeah, and what we've got here is a uh, 9.5 deck height Windsor with a set of Z304 cylinder heads, so it's a real common engine. And we just want to see how wide one is versus the other. So let's uh, take a quick measurement. All right, so we'll go, we'll go uh, the top of the valve cover to the top of the valve cover, which would be about the widest point of the engine, right? Right, it's about 23 and a half inches, the Windsor. Let's walk over and take a look at what we are versus the 7.3. All right, so let me put it in about the same spot. And this is about 25 and a half, so it's about two inches wider. Uh, and again, with the taller head and the bell crane it has, that makes sense. Right, and that's only an inch per side, which isn't Correct. a big deal if you're putting it in a car. Yeah, I think everyone saw that it fits in a Fox body pretty nicely, and uh, this says, yeah, and it should, because it's only a little bit wider. All right, so let's check out the length of the engine and see how long it is. So we'll go like uh, to the, I'm gonna go to the front of the timing cover. Okay, so to the rear face of the block, it's about 22 and a half inches. All right, check this one out. We'll check out the 7.3. And to the front of the timing cover there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm getting 24 inches. Okay. It's so it's about longer. an inch and a quarter longer, and it does have that bigger bore space from 4.38 on the Windsor to 4.53 on this engine. So that explains it. And plus this front cover does have a lot packed into it. So right. that makes up those extra a little bit. So it's about right. an inch and a quarter longer. Right, so how, how, would, how do you think this would stack up to a Coyote? You know, that's a great question. I wonder if we can find one and we'll just go measure it real quick. All right, let's check it out. All right. All right, so Brian uh, happened to have a Coyote in the shop, which is pretty cool that you have one of these sitting around. So let's take a look at the width on this thing. All right. Yeah, so this is about 30 inches wide to the outside of the cover's widest point of the engine. Right, and we know it fits it really nicely in a Fox body, not so great in some of the earlier Mustangs. You gotta mm -hmm. do some work to the shock towers, but let's check out the length, All right. just as long as we're measuring everything. And is that about to the front of it, or is it a little too far? Uh, it's right on the front there. Yeah, it's about 21 and 3 eighths of an inch. So it's more compact this way, and it's got a low manifold, so these do fit pretty nice in a lot of different stuff, and uh, I think you got one more Ford engine in the shop for us to take a look at. What's that? Yeah, we have one more engine we want to take a look at, and all these are, you know, used in multiple uh, areas from, you know, street cars to all-out racing, but when you start to talk all-out racing, a lot of the Ford guys will not only use an inline valve Windsor, they'll go to the SC1 heads. So we have right. an SC1 headed uh, X275 engine in the shop. Let's go take a look at what that looks like. All right, let's take a peek. All right. Okay, so now we're over here by Brian's X275 Fox Body Mustang. And what do we got going on here as far as the engine goes? Yeah, what we have is a uh, billet block uh, Windsor-based engine uh, with the uh, Glidden Victor SC1 cylinder heads on it, which is a pretty common combination for X275. And again, this is a 10-inch deck height block uh, that we're working with. All right, let's see how wide it is. Okay, so this is about 27 and three quarters of an inch wide. Cool. So it's a bit wider than the other push rod engines, but not quite as wide as the Coyote. Right, and we already measured the length. Yeah, so we know that it's about the same as a Windsor, but we'll check that out. Yeah, it's about 22 and a half inches. Cool. So with that said, what do you say we take apart a 7.3? Can we do that and take a look at, you know, the crank, the block, the heads, all the good stuff that everybody wants to see? Absolutely, let's go for it. Okay, so I already pulled the valve cover off and just want to talk a little bit about the factory valve train. So one thing you'll see, these are really nice rocker arms right from the factory nitrated roller bearings. So they're really good for high mileage durability and also really low friction. So a really nice piece, you know, right from the factory. Next thing you'll notice uh, that I think everyone will like is their air canted valve head. So we're at about an 8.8 .8 valve angle on both uh, valves from the deck. And then the intake is canted at 2.8 degrees, I'm sorry, 2.9 degrees, and the exhaust at 1.9 degrees. So that also helps with valve sizing. Other nice thing about the cylinder head configuration is the injectors are in the cylinder head port itself. So 
from a factory perspective, that's really nice from a stack up and knowing exactly where that fuel is going to spray. And getting everything you can out of this engine as it comes from the factory is really important for fuel efficiency and reliability. Yeah, next thing we'll do is we'll pull the intake off. Uh, it's got a nice typical flat flange for easy mounting and has integral gaskets in it, so it's a very easy thing to pull off. The other, the other nice thing about this manifold is while it's designed for a truck and it's got great torque throughout the engine operation range, it's also surprisingly good. I think this manifold would be good for most users up to 6,500 RPM. So either you throw a little boost or you th we'll throw a little bit nitrous at this thing, it's gonna work really well, even with the stock manifold. But we all know that we're gonna see aftermarket manifolds very shortly for this engine. Okay, we're gonna flip, take the manifold off right now, let you see what that's all about. So we'll flip this up, I already loosened the fasteners. And you can see, you know, it's conventional today with manufacturing, you've got nice pressed in place gaskets, reusable, no RTV joints to deal with. Just unbolt the manifold and pull it right off. Now, Brian, obviously looking at the head, obviously we're going to take that off too, but what are some of the attributes of that port flange being flat like that versus a typical Windsor that everybody's used to that has an angled port? Yeah, the nice thing about this is when you bolt the manifold down, it doesn't add any stresses to uh, the block. So when you have that V in the manifold and you actually torque that down, it can actually put a little bit of a wedge and actually cause more distortion, believe it or not. So we went to this flat flange really with the original 4.6 modular engine back in 1992. And everything we've done since then has had that feature. So Brian, is there anything uh, significant about the head bolts? Uh, head bolts, uh, the real nice thing is they're a large head bolt. They're a little over a half uh, inch in diameter, the 13 millimeters. The nice thing is they're all the same, uppers and lowers. Um, and I like that they are, you know, the conventional deep head bolts down the block, but that whole boring compression, which helps with uh, bore distortion and ring sealing. Okay, so the head gasket here, it's a uh, pretty common by today's standards of head gaskets. It's that nice multi-layer steel head gasket. Uh, this one happens to be four layers. Uh, it works great for sealing. The multi-layer has been used for many years now in the aftermarket and many years by Ford. Uh, just really good sealing and again, doesn't overload the top of the bore, so it really keeps for um, nice uh, uh, conditions for bore distortion. Okay, what we have here is a cylinder head off the 7.3. Uh, this cylinder head, of course, you know, versus the Windsor stuff that we talked about earlier, the pretty radical departure. You've got a really, really high intake port on these heads. You've got the flat flange that we talked about that really helps with uh, minimizing bore distortion. And then of course we have a really, really nice valve train. So we have a super high spring package that comes from the uh, factory. And of course we have these canned valves that are in there. Um, the valves, uh, again, that cannon helps pull it away from the wall a little bit uh, to help shrouding. And um, this set of heads, as you can see, has been touched up just a little bit. But even with that, these heads still float about 320 CFM on the intake side, which from a stock head is pretty, pretty, pretty stout without much work done. Okay, so like with any new project or any new engine, especially, there's going to be experimentation. Brian, what is going on with that intake? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, this intake is just part of the package. So uh, we worked with Dave Visner on this, and uh, this has a very minor port job because the cylinder has the intake and the exhaust. It has a higher lift uh, camshaft in it, still hydraulic, and of course this intake, which is really cool to look at. So this configuration, we made just under 600 horsepower with it. And again, it's uh, stock rods, pistons, uh, you know, kind of your basic cam clean up the ports and an intake and uh, it makes some pretty good power. Now, of course, this looks like it's very high because it was just made for dyno development, not to actually package in a car. All right, so thanks for checking out our video on the 7.3 gas engine. We're gonna have so much more upcoming on this engine and on all kinds of cool stuff on the channel. We appreciate you subscribing. Brian, thank you so much for having us. Hey, Evan, it was a pleasure, enjoyed it. All right, take care, everyone.